Hey guys, and welcome back! So, yeah, I kind of disappeared for a couple of weeks. It's all good, it's all good. I'm, I I did this, basically I ran into a, a couple of roadblocks. One, I got pretty busy between work and, you know, doing stuff around the house, so I didn't really have the, the time to create anything. But more importantly, I was having issues coming up with a new game. Now, I know I mentioned at the end of Breath of Death that I would have probably made a, an extra video to kind of explain my whole thought process on that. And that's pretty much what this is. But at the same time, I was expecting to make a video still not knowing what exactly I was going to be making a, a new Let's Play for. Because I really hadn't thought it through and... I was kind of burnt out because I did put a lot of effort into Legend of Dragoon and into Breath of Death in terms of mapping. And Legend of Dragoon was just a very large project that had me going back and forth and checking things out and going ahead, you know, right before I'd record just so I'd be really familiar with it. Because it is one of my, my favorite games and I did want to do a good job with it. And uh, more than anything, I just I didn't see a lot of variety when it came to Legend of Dragoon Let's Plays on YouTube. Now I'm sure there are plenty of good ones out there. I just, most of the ones that I found were either incomplete or just weren't done in what I would consider a very, you know, professional or even particularly interesting way. Um, I'm sure some people feel the same about my videos. It's all down to opinion, but that was my opinion when I was looking around for Legend of Dragoon Let's Plays a number of years ago. And it was one of the reasons why I wanted to do what I did with the, the Let's Play, and I am very happy that I did it. But at the same time, it did kind of burn me out. I did spend a lot of time doing the research and, you know, all of the, the testing and all that stuff. So when it came down to searching for something new, I didn't want something that was also going to require a lot of research. And it kind of became a problem because I couldn't find anything that I felt like playing that I could actually do that with. Pretty much all the games I was interested in still needed more work, or at least needed a lot of work, even if I was, say, partly familiar with them. Now, my Xenogears um, test run basically is stalled out. I haven't gone back to that game. I will eventually. Hopefully I can get the motivation to do that at some point. Um, but uh, who knows when that will be. Um, in the meantime, I think I've mentioned it before, but I finished Final Fantasy XIII, so that's kind of off my plate and out of the way. I don't have to think about that anymore. And, of course, you know, there's thirteen two and Lightning Returns, none of which I will probably get around to anytime soon, so. Uh, but that basically left me with a bunch of options, you know. What could I play that was, you know, I could kind of like to go, you know, a larger game, a smaller game, a larger game, a smaller game. Or if I'm going to do a smaller game, at least do a couple of medium games after that. And I just, I couldn't find the right balance. I couldn't find the right big game that wouldn't take a lot of effort, that wouldn't take a lot of research, because a lot of them would. And I, again, I've got pretty much everything I want prepped on Xenosaga, but... I'm not going to do that until I finish Xeno Gears, so there's a problem with that. I was also thinking about moving into something else, like, say, a Shadow Hearts game. But again, I've only played the first two of those games once, and they do share a lot of similarities with Legend of Dragoon in terms of the battle system, and I'm kind of drained out from that kind of a battle system, so I was looking for something else. I had thought about doing Final Fantasy V, and I still am thinking about it, but the biggest issue with Final Fantasy V is, and I'll get into this more if and when I eventually make a Let's Play for it, I was having a lot of issues during my first playthrough, and I ended up using, I was playing the anthology version, so I'm not sure what the translation is in the other ones right off the top of my head, but the bare-fisted ability, the ability of the monk to basically do same type of damage on any other character as a secondary ability. I basically use that on all my characters because most of the time I couldn't get weapons that were strong enough to surpass that. But of course, having no equipment on everything from a knight to a white mage to a geomancer kind of made the game extremely boring. And that was just my first playthrough when I was, oh, uh, what would I have been, 12, 15, something like that? 
yeah, so I didn't do, I didn't have a very good first experience with the game. Later on, I watched H.C. Bailey's Let's Play of it and kind of took a different take on it and started to enjoy the game a lot more. So I have much greater respect for the game now than I did, you know, when I first played it. However, my play style now pretty much emulates his. And that being said, I don't know what else I can add to it. I'd, again, have to go into and do some research. I'd also put thought to Final Fantasy VIII, though I kind of put that one to the side because one of the Let's Players I watch is currently doing that game, so I'm not going to embargo on his territory. Um... Final Fantasy VI was another option, but uh, I didn't really have any reason not to. I just really didn't feel like playing the game right now. So I started looking over at the Star Ocean series, which probably will be the reason why this uh, the image you're seeing is of a PSP emulator. Um, yeah, I, I kind of thought, you know, that'd be a good idea. Which one do I know the best? Well, let's see. The one I know the best is the third one. Think about that for a minute. That one requires a lot of research, even though I know a lot about it. So, off to the side. Star Ocean Second Story. Hmm. Played that one twice, and I haven't played it in about six, eight years. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do a whole new research. And there's a lot of things to do with the endings. Uh, private actions, which I skipped over every time I've played. I've never done any of the private actions, unless they were required to get characters. And of course, you know, on the second playthrough, I was looking them up to find all the characters that I missed on the first playthrough. Which, of course, you know, again, more research, more stuff, which led me back to the first game. Now, the first game I had an interesting experience with the uh, first time I played it, and basically it led to a lot of freezing, a lot of glitching, and a lot of me swearing at the game and having to restart because the emulation was not very good and I don't don't think it's much better now, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. So, that being said, I was looking to the PSP version of the game. So, I was like, oh, "Okay, I'll play the PSP version." And I loaded, it, you know, found myself an emulator, took a look at it, and it seemed interesting, but they changed certain things that I liked, and I didn't get very far. Like, I just played the intro first hour or so, and there was some bugs with the emulation that I couldn't overlook and stuff like that. So I decided it was probably best to go back to the classic SNES version of the game. However, at the same time, I wanted to kind of show off some of the interesting bits that we'll get if you play the PSP version, which is the version that most people will probably be playing at this point. So that being said, let's take a look at... that's the right one. Let's take a look at the first one and the opening cinematic. <laughs> now, for the most part, I'm, I'm gonna, probably going to talk about this in a little bit, but uh, when we get to watching the opening video, which I also want to show off because it gives you a better idea and understanding of what's going on watching the opening video in the PSP version of the game as opposed to the Super Nintendo version, and I'll get into that when we get there as well. But basically, this just kind of gives you an overview of what the game is pretty much like. Not the game itself, but, you know, the... The characters you're going to deal with, the story, the kind of the themes that they're going to work with. And, well, I'm not, I don't hate the, the opening theme song, but it's not my favorite either. Though, the more I've listened to it over the last uh, week or so, the, uh, the more it's kind of grown on me. Anyway, one of the things I really like about the Star Ocean series is all of the different things you can do, especially when it comes to item creation. However, that, again, leads to a lot of work, and I initially had decided that, you know what, Star Ocean was going to be just too much work for where my mind was at, but after running through and doing a few tests to see if I could even get through the game, at least to a certain extent, um, at all, I ended up coming to the realization that, you know what, there are some things that I'm kind of fearing that... I can bypass and completely ignore, possibly. 
And there are other things that I won't have to deal with for a while, so I can kind of put them off and kind of space out all the work that I'm going to have to do on it. So I haven't really done an official test run. I, you know, played a few hours, I think six or seven hours into the game. But uh, I'll kind of work ahead like I did with uh, Legend of Dragoon. And uh, hopefully this will be interesting. But uh, let's start a new game just to show off the, uh, the opening video here. This time I'll be a little quiet. Planet say confirmed. Departing high density space at 1203. Set the coordinates to T50321. Roger. Putting Issei on screen. Something's wrong with the gravitational readings. There's a giant energy wave approaching us, sir, at high speed. The magnitude is 40.3 quadrillion joules, sir. Turn the ship about. Fire thrusters. Full power right away, and give me some warp coordinates. Look alive, people. I'm watching Star Trek. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yeah, they really kind of overdo the Star Trek uh, jargon kind of idea there. <laughs> oh, well. Here it comes. Activate anti-shock. Raise defense shields. SD-346, an unknown power threatens to hurl us into a new age of civilization. Is it the will of the gods, or just the whimsy of fate? Whatever it is, the human race continues to advance into the great unknown, into what they called the Star Ocean. Hey, okay, that's just cheesy. <laughs> Throwing your game into the, or, you know, the title of your game into the, the jargon of the, uh, you know, of the game's universe. Kind of cheesy, especially in this case, because basically that's what a star ocean is. You look up at the sky, there's lots of stars, it's an ocean of stars. That's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the idea that they're going with. It's kind of cheesy the way they like to, to do it. Man, I'm bored. Hey, that's a good thing. It means all's well. No, that means you're bored. What about Millie? What do you really think about her anyway? Hmm? What do you mean? Uh, let me give you a friendly warning. That girl's a total scatterbrain. She doesn't listen to anyone. <gasps> She's just a total na- Ugh. I've seen this anime before. <laughs> uh, Millie! Is she listen, a cat? I, uh, meant- <laughs> You jerk! Yeah, she has you've got time to complain about me. You've got time to work. There's nothing to do around here, Millie. Why don't you go out on a patrol then? Come on, I'll join you. We can all do it together. Uh, all right. Uh, Roddick, you come with us too. Uh, it's settled then. We'll all go together. Yeah, they kind of went bipolar with her character. Okay, anyway, um, there are a couple things in the actual game that I did want to show off, just that were really funny. Uh, the first thing is that the animation style, the art style for both um, First Departure, which is the uh, PSP remake of the first Star Ocean, and Second Evolution, which is the uh, PSP remake of Second Story, they both use the Star Ocean Second Story engine, and graphical style, sprite style, pretty much everything. Um, you know same menu system from Star Ocean Second Story, commands, pretty much everything. And, well, that's not a bad thing. It's kind of jarring because they've removed a lot of different areas. The world map before was basically a bunch of individual screens where you kind of just walk through little, you know, forest mazes or, you know, cave mazes, whatever it may be. And in this case, they've removed those for a more traditional world map, which I can't show off unless I bum through a whole bunch of the game. But uh, one of the reasons why I ended up not deciding not to go with the PSP version is it changes the game too much from what I've actually experienced before. The original Star Ocean I played one time all the way through, and although it took, you know, kind of restarting, going back, you know, like 10 hours at one point when my game glitched out, yeah, it... Uh, it wasn't fun, but I did play the game through exactly one time, and I'm more familiar with that than I am with this. But more than that, it came down to a bunch of bugs. I got to one point where I'd hit the world map, and my sprite and all the other sprites disappeared. Now, 
think I found a way to bypass that. But there's one thing I haven't been able to figure out. I can't walk on this garden over here. That's not where I want to go. But somehow, I can walk on the house. How does this work? <laughs> the paneling system is broken! <laughs> yeah, I'm standing on the roof. Whee! <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they did with this, but... They're all like this. I don't know how they managed to do this, but uh, they screwed something up along the way in programming, or maybe it's just the emulator. I don't know. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to go over. This is kind of like a preview for uh, the next Let's Play, which uh, won't begin right away. It will begin uh, probably in a few days once I actually get some content. Uh, as of recording this, I haven't recorded anything for it yet. Uh, and I would like to get a couple of episodes under my belt before I, you know, so I can get everything figured out properly so that I don't have any hiccups when I actually start recording and uploading and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry about the absence. Uh, it's the first real break I've actually taken since I uh, started Let's Playing. I've taken, you know, a couple of breaks here and there, you know, a couple of days, a day, you know, three, three days, something like that. But this is the first extended break I've had. And I think it's about a year and a half since I began making these. And, well, I think it was well needed. <laughs> I needed a bit of a break, especially with how hot it's been and how much there's been to do. So anyway, I hope you've, uh, you know, you guys stick around and see what uh, we can do with Star Ocean. And I, uh, well, yeah, all for this little preview. And we'll see you guys next time.